Welcome back to the channel. I am in Seattle, Washington for the next few days. No particular reason, just wanted to get out of the city, work from home for um, one or two of the days. And there's a lot of restaurants that have been on my list that I wasn't able to get to last time I was here. So gonna knock those out as well and just really wind down and relax. So we're staying at the Astra Hotel. I'm gonna give you guys a quick tour of the place. So obviously this is the view. Got a couple queen beds here. My little workstation. We got a pretty fat TV here. Storing, stow away some luggage, a safe. I like these hangers here because they kind of just uh, pull out like that. So got our bags hung up. Mini fridge, it's empty but We'll get some stuff in there. Here are some of the Jones. I packed pretty light. I only brought these, which good for walking, and then I'm um, gonna be using them at the fitness center. I'm also wearing these like New Balance slippers. Here's that bomber. Here's my Snow Peak puffer. Anderson Bell, J.W. Anderson, Alexander McQueen. Just real relax, calm fits this weekend. Nothing too crazy. Brought these as well, my Vibram Doc Martens. I didn't bring any of my nicer boots just because it's gonna be the, the chronic rain that Seattle's known for. Shower, mirror. This is our sink and all the products and stuff that we brought, which is very compact. Actually, there's one thing I wanted to show you guys. So basically, if you fly Delta, you can ask them for one of these, which is like a trading card. So this is the um, plane number. They just want to encourage interaction between passengers and the captain. I think you can even go into like the cockpit and everything, but I didn't. It was so early that I was like, you know what? As long as I get this, I'm gonna be pretty happy. So make sure to ask for this if you fly Delta. The chronic rain has reared its ugly head. We are now approaching Blue Owl Workshop. Uh, no, sorry, that's just like what we're doing. When he comes, we gotta yeah. like, what's up? Yeah, yeah. We were in there for a fat minute because just chopping it up. I got called out because last time I was in Seattle, I was just chirping. But yeah, I got hella wrecks. I need to kind of workshop my itinerary now because there's just so much that was thrown at me. That was Steven at Blue Owl, super chill guy. Now I'm real excited for uh, how the rest of this trip is gonna pan out. So all of this are wrecks that they gave us. Like we got some, like a record, like a vinyl bar. We got vintage, we got fucking boba, we got food wrecks. Everything's here, you know? Bestseller. Cheers. This chronic rain got me feeling real sleepy. We just left Paper Cake Shop. Those cakes were really good, and I mean, just think about their business model. They only sell cakes, buy the slice, 
about $10 a slice. So just think about how good the cake's gotta be to be selling just slices of cake. You get me, fam. We're heading to Kamonegi, which is a soba restaurant. And literally, I've been to Seattle four times now. Every time I try to go, they're closed for some reason. This time, we snagged the reservation. I am not missing out on Kamonegi again. This is gonna be our first like actual meal because we just had coffee and cake. So the diet's not looking too good. Ever since I spent time in a foreign country, I realized just how stupid Americans are and this their like aversion to umbrellas. Like everybody here is just raw dog in the rain for no reason. It's pouring out, bro. It is pouring out. Pretty sure they got broken into recently, which is why the storefront looks so underwhelming. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I am back at the hotel. I needed that 25 minute bus ride to just process what the hell just happened. So here is my review of Kamonegi. All right, let me just go play by play because I don't want any misunderstandings, miscommunications, um, and you guys can let me know if I'm tripping or what. So we get there at about 3.50, pouring rain, right? Someone comes out and tells us like they're not open yet and we kind of already knew that because it says they're open at four so we're just standing there waiting until four o'clock four o'clock rolls around we step in and you know start putting away our umbrellas and then this like waitress server person is like oh we're not open yet and i was like oh like our reservation's at four and then she goes yeah but we're not open and like just super curt right with a little attitude right and then she tells us can you wait outside and then i'm like okay you know sure because i'm just trying to have a good experience i've been looking forward to going to kamonegi like i told you guys like this is my fourth time in seattle the last three times i tried to come but they were closed for whatever reason so you know i i wasn't really reading into it too much um so I step outside and then like a minute later she comes out and she's like, oh, we're ready for you guys now. What what was the point in that? Can you please tell me what was the point of us stepping out, opening our umbrellas again, and then 60 seconds lit pass and you tell us to come back in? Like why couldn't we have just sat down and just waited? Like I would have been totally content with waiting, you know? I'm punctual, I'm here on time. In fact, I'm, in, I'm here early and you're over here telling me like you guys aren't open yet whose problem is that we sit down and she's just like super passive aggressive and like trying to be polite but like it's like nah like where, where's that energy from earlier telling us to go stand outside in the rain the fuck again i'm just trying to suppress any like anger or whatever you know because it's been a smooth day buttery smooth bear in mind this place is known for soba and tempura right we ordered the the salt water eel tempura and First of all, I squeeze the lemon on, I break the, the piece of tempura apart, and I'm ready to dunk it into the salt mix. And what's in the salt mix? A fucking hair. That hair was centered like smack in the middle. You couldn't even center a birthday cake that precisely. Okay, It almost felt like it was deliberately placed there. You know what I mean? So then 
you know, call them over, let them know. And they're just so unapologetic about it. And just like, yeah, that happens, you know? But like on top of the shitty ass attitude you welcome us with, there's a hair in the salt mix. The tempura was not even freshly made. Like that shit was like a second fry, maybe a third fry. You guys are known for soba and tempura and like you guys aren't even frying this shit fresh, bro. Are you kidding me? The highlight of the whole dinner was the coffee salmon tartare. That was actually pretty good, but like how are you letting your appetizers outshine the tempura and the soba that you guys are known for? That soba, I'm not even gonna lie, that was some mid. That was some, holy, that was mid. The soba I make at the crib offers me more satisfaction than that. I just find it so funny that at the end they give me like the starchy noodle water that the soba was cooked in to dilute the soba broth. And they're like, yeah, the broth is super concentrated and salty. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. That shit is not concentrated. That shit is not salty. There was no umami. It was so flat and one dimensional. Like, why are you guys gassing yourselves up like that? You know, like all in all, if we're talking strictly food itself, I'm giving it two, 2.5 out of five. If we're factoring in the overall service, like halfway through another server tries to bring the wrong thing to our table. Okay, that also happens, right? Another server comes pouring water, water's fucking splashing everywhere, almost getting on my camera and shit. Like, what are you guys doing? You know, if you don't wanna work here, like don't work here, Blake, but I came here to dine and, and have a good experience. You guys are just fucking everything up. You factor in the dining experience. The ambiance was weak as hell too. Like, it was just like a, like a mid-tier restaurant trying to be like upscale, like just no, bro, no. Factor in the dining experience, one out of five looking strictly at the food itself a two 2.25 out of five like that was some ass cheeks that was garbaggio like i highly do not recommend going there i don't even like to throw around the word egregious because the, the word is, is so powerful and i just don't want to dilute it but that was egregious i say that with my chest that was some that was ass sorry for the french and i didn't come here to like complain or like bring negativity but i just had to just rant it took everything in me to not write some bullshit on that additional tip line i think that the the waitress was just so brazen because the gratuity or the service charge was already preset you know at 20 percent, which is like very generous i'd say keep the same energy you know like wh why are you switching up on me like that so whack kids these days and their Balenciaga jeans dragging all over the floor. We are doing dinner at Itsumono, Isakaya here in the International District. Cheers, my friends. <sighs> Just winding down, doing a face mask, enjoying an IPA. I started uh, watching this new drama, The Brother's Son, and it's about like a triad family from Taiwan. And I mean, we're only a couple episodes in, but it's so digestible and easy to watch, and there's like some mystique to it, and yeah, definitely recommend checking that out. This wraps up day one, Seattle. So freaking chill, minus the rain, but I think, you know, we're adjusting to it. So it is what it is. Good night.
TD. We got the helmet bag. We got the Vibram Doc Martens. Alexander McQueen. Bare Knuckles, Chrome Hearts, Vintage Military. We got the Ricky. We got the Uniqlo gloves back here. We got the Margella, just in case. Yes, sir. Just wanted to hop on here and say, be nice to people. Cause like, this is back to back days now that I've ran into some rude ass motherfuckers. And you know, I'm, I'm too old, I'm too mature to like entertain that bullshit. But had it been a couple years ago, things could have gotten real ignorant, could have gotten real ugly. I don't care if you're having a bad day, don't take that out on other people, you know? Like, what's the matter with you guys? I used to wear these shoes all the time when I was a kid. I had two pairs of them. These were just the closest I could get to a pair of Jordan 4s. The nostalgia right now is just beating my ass. I mean, I think these are pretty cool though. Things are pretty sick. So one ninety one and then an extra thirty off of that. So I'm gonna try on this top because I think it's kinda sick. I'm sort of a big fan of Martin Rose. Fly or what? I'm fucking with it. Like, look at how it fits, like, before tucked in, it's already at a good length. It goes with my current fit, too. Yeah, it's, it was fire. Oh, okay. I cop something for myself and something for the lady. Remember, you're only as fly as your partner, so make sure that they're dripped out, too. Left Atelier, and we're going to... Uh, Winthrow, which is a more like corpy outdoorsy store. Atelier is the old Totokayo, and I think that's how it's pronounced. That's why when I was walking around, I was like, I feel like I've been in here before. But I've, I have also been to the Atelier in New York. The one in New York got some weird vibes. I remember going in there and they were just like staring at me like I was gonna steal something or I don't know. Um, yeah. No photos or recording at Atelier, so I didn't want to really challenge their store policies. And it makes a lot of sense because the sales associate was telling me that with Tokaya, like people are just hanging out at the store, taking flicks and stuff like that. So from a business standpoint, that makes a lot of sense. The sales associate actually asked me, like, do you do YouTube? I feel like I've seen some of your stuff. So that was cool to get some recognition there. Two stores that I've gone to where someone like has watched the video that I've made, so it's super dope. This guy looks really cool. So yeah. should, I, should I just be like, hey, it's Nate? Like, yeah. yeah, hey, it's Nate, this is yeah. Winthrow. Hey, it's Nate, uh, this is Winthrow in Seattle, a kind of a weird, quirky, nifty, premium outdoor store. Located on the very tippy top of Capitol Hill on yeah. 15th Avenue. Yeah, do lots of cool events and, yeah. Yeah. And have lots of sweet gear. And you guys are new, only and been we're here new. For... only around for nine months. Yeah, so I almost missed it walking down because yeah, it was we're like hit, we're hidden. Yeah. We're right next to a subway yeah. sandwiches. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> Got back to the hotel because there's no seating for um, Carmelo's. I wish someone told me that because we literally decided to go there so because it was close to where we were and we wanted to stay out. But this forced us to come back. But uh, it's pretty timely because wearing Doc Martens is just so uncomfortable. My feet are killing me. How are you doing? Eat. This is the first meal for today. 
It is currently, I don't know if you guys can see that, 3.30, 3.30 and we've done so much walking, morning workout, everything. It's nice that they got them on these plates for us. Oh, look at this. Okay. These are the pastor, I'm pretty sure. Asada. This one is uh, Nepal, I think that's how it's called. Cactus, and then uh, chorizo and steak. That looks real proper, I'm not gonna lie. I'm starving. So this is the whole situation. Got one of these out. Yes, sir. So hungry. Chorizo and pastor. Didn't know that was a thing. Mmm. No mames. The tortillas, they're all handmade. So far, makes a huge difference. Testing, testing. I'm mic'd up for the rest of the evening. Let me know if you guys prefer this sound quality over just the regular, you know, the camera. But we are heading to dinner. We're doing a sushi omakase. And this one's quite special because this is Shiro's omakase. And I took a good friend of mine here back in, I wanna say 2019, about four years ago, for his first ever omakase. And this place really left an impression on me. They had staff that, you know, these are ex Alinea employees, like what the hell? Friendly staff, good vibes, and yeah, just really looking forward to it. So let's, let's go. to a salt and straw before our nightlife uh, plan which will be Shibuya Hi-Fi. This is gonna be like a hi-fi vinyl listening room cocktail bar. It's gonna be just such a, such a vibe. Uh, Steven at Blue Owl recommended to me and that's just right up my alley. Anyway, I digress. Um, back to Shiro Sushi. Just, just how I remembered it three, four years ago. Staff are super hospitable. They just want to be there. It's just, they love their job. They're so engaging. They're so fun to be around. It's it's infectious, you know? Um, the fish, high quality, traditional, um, just an amazing experience. I can't recommend that place enough. I speak so highly of it because it is just so top tier that, you know, definitely worth a visit. Check them out if you're in Seattle. I'm rambling, sorry about that. 
just <laughs> had a whole bottle of sake in my system. Um, yeah, I'll check back in when we were at Salt and Straw. Well, well, well. We skipped out dessert at the Omakase. But here we are. Salt and Straw, Ballard. Yes, sir. Look at that. Strawberry honey balsamic with black pepper and then the olive oil. What'd you get? Red velvet and banana sauce too with pecan. Fuck, that's good. The black pepper, it's kind of sour. Oh my god, this is perfect. I'm glad we skipped the dessert at the Omakase. I'm just supposed to like next door to Shibuya High Fi. Good morning, welcome to day three in Seattle. About noon right now, we're currently heading to get some ramen. I really like this place called Oink, but it's in Capitol Hill and there's just like, it's just kind of grim, like the corner that it's on. It's a lot of uh, traffic, let's just say that. And then there's this other place called like Betsu, Betsujin or something like that. And apparently that place is hit or miss. So we're going to this place called Menya Sukmen and just gonna warm up because it's kind of cold out today. review the ramen real quick that was some proper ramen if i'm being nitpicky the soft boiled egg could have been a little warmer and the sukmin dipping broth was a little salty but everything was solid i would highly recommend it i give it like a 8.5 out of 10 for sure quick little ootd we got the u chicago beanie a little ice the snow peak puffer that merged bichuan and tea JWA at the auto joints. Cool gloves in the back pocket. This bag is actually Snow Peak. I uh, got this for work, but it's a pretty big bag, lightweight and useful, low key. It's a solid bag. We are going to Volunteer Park right now. In Volunteer Park, there's also the cemetery that Bruce Lee and his brother were buried in. Or at, in or at, the Seattle Asian Art Museum is over there also. And uh, yeah, the, oh, so the brother of the architect of Design Central Park did the Volunteer Park, so that's why it's kind of a big deal. It's kind of special. Bruce Lee and Brandon Lee's grave. Um, felt a little weird pointing a camera at it, but you know, hopefully that there's nothing superstitious about doing that. Bruce Lee, I had no idea, died at the age of 33 from like a cerebral edema. He's from San Francisco and died in Hong Kong. So I don't know why he's buried in Seattle of all places, but yeah, just an icon, a legend. Died at 33 years old. I'm gonna be 33 in like six, seven years. Like that's that's insane. Like I haven't done anything yet. It really makes me think how how big of a deal he was. This is gonna be the last store we go to this trip and it's called Late Night Market or Midnight Market because they close at midnight. Pretty cool concept because most stores don't stay open that late. First vintage shop we're hitting this trip.
looks like a it's like an old jar that they repurposed. Drinking containers. Look at this bread. Are you kidding me? Look at that. Did you get that crunch? Oh my god. I can't believe I found this place. I think I found this place on TikTok. Bro. Come on. Come on. One bite, everyone knows the world. Come on, look at that. This looks OD. Looks nuts. Oh my god. Oh, yeah. The pasta is al dente. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Let's experiment a little bit. We're gonna go with the pasta. We're gonna add a little bit of this. Like, seriously, it tastes like Chinese like, chili oil. It's nuts. I'm not a It's like I'm eating Italian food and dim sum at the same time. We need my spice, especially in the winter time. That endorphin release is non-negotiable. Fuck yeah. All right, let's go. Let's go. Affogato, espresso over the ice cream. I got a workout after this, so this is timely. Get a slurp here. Cheers. It's perfect. I just don't like when things are too sweet, so an affogato is right up my alley. Especially for being a coffee lover. Cornelli, here in Seattle, Washington. This place needs to be gate kept. I don't even live here, this place needs to be gate kept. This is, uh, protect this place at all costs. 9042 is highway robbery because they need to be charging way more for this food. This meal's on the lady.
right, review time. I can't say that the pho is better than the spot I go to back in Chicago, but I love the ambiance and the big ass ribs and yeah, it was just a vibe. I wouldn't say it was bad or anything, but not the best pho I've ever had. Still recommend checking it out. That's Oni Baba. We came here to pick up some onigiri for the road, bring some back to Chicago and have something to snack on at the airport and on the plane.